Stellar Blade is a one and done experience. Unless you're a trophy hunter and or you just have to scratch that itch for New Game Plus. So what exactly is the big deal? Less than one hour into Stellar Blade, I knew it was a game I was likely to actually finish. And I definitely knew it was one I wanted to make a video about. The problem was, aside from obviously just reviewing the game, there were so many angles to approach this from. This game is a lot more than it might first seem. I told a work friend I was playing it and he said, that sounds like Nier Automata meets Sekiro. I told my partner about it and she said, that sounds like Dark Souls but you're a dress up Barbie. I knew that I wanted to have one key takeaway from this game, a single element that can be the TLDR for this video, but what to choose? I mean, I suppose I could weigh in on the raging argument between the over-sexualization versus censorship of female characters. No, absolutely not. I've been on the internet since 1997 and I've been a white male all my life. I know when my opinion isn't wanted. The only thing I do feel safe saying is you can dress even swimwear, and you can dress her in a tracksuit and pretty much everything in between. So, you know, just pick an outfit that works for you. Now, whenever I load a new game for the first time, I look in the accessibility options before I start. I do this because bad design tropes like quick time events are about as fun today as they were when they were conceived, roughly on par with having to reapply for your own job. And I adore that some games now give you the choice to make things like this optional. Also, whenever I try a Souls-like for the first time, if I see any kind of difficulty modifier then you bet your ass I will try it out, and I will explain this in a moment. Stellar Blade ticks both of these boxes, and the end result is a game far more accessible and a lot less frustrating than it otherwise has the potential to be. As I look back on my time with Stellar Blade, more than the anime tropolicious storyline, more than the way the execution show you Eve's crotch in slow motion, Heck, even more than how much celebration is given to Eve's cans. The thing that stuck with me more than anything else was this. This right here was the moment. Accessibility in a Souls-like was officially my key takeaway from Stellar Blade. Okay, so that potentially pissed a lot of people off, and I should probably explain myself now. First up, does this mean I think Souls games should have an easy mode? No, no I do not. Honestly, that is a whole other video in itself. But to boil this down to one single argument, Souls games are some of the most precisely crafted games I have ever played. They give you as much as they ask from you. And this is just one of the justifications for them being able to demand nothing but your best. I have played some genuinely brilliant Souls-likes over the years, but not one of them has offered that same level of precision or polish. Lies of P came pretty close, but apparently nobody can match Miyazaki on this one. Stellar Blade is really, really good, but you also have the potential for shit like this. I mean, even if I just spammed block in Sekiro, it would have gone better than this. So, if a Souls-like offers you the choice to make this less precise gameplay a little kinder, to ease it more in the direction of fun rather than frustrating, then like I said, you bet your ass I'm going to try it out. Secondly, I am of course aware that accessibility goes a lot further than just modifying difficulty. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Star Wars Jedi Survivor here, because that is a Souls-like with a whole suite of what seem to be excellent accessibility options, and definitely a few that I took advantage of to tailor my experience. Souls-likes are often considered to be an easier gateway into the Souls experience because they sometimes offer difficulty modifiers, whilst accessibility options seem to vary from game to game regardless of genre. Stellar Blade is the first Souls-like I have seen that combines these two elements to offer a solution to one of the biggest obstacles into the genre. When you face off against an enemy that can combo lock you, and you keep messing up the timings or trying the wrong counteraction, it is so, so easy to get flustered. 
and almost immediately killed, and any burgeoning confidence you may have been feeling will likely evaporate. In these situations, Stellar Blade will outright tell you what to do. It takes you by the hand and helps you learn. Turning on the Action Assist option enables timed button prompts, guiding you away from panic field button mashing and more towards control. For this reason, I hereby declare Stellar Blade to be my most accessible Souls-like. Again, not because it has the best accessibility options. Frankly, I don't feel qualified to make that kind of statement, but because it is the most accommodating introduction to the genre that I personally have ever seen. Now, arguably, yes, I could invest the time and learn all the character movements and timings of each and every Souls-like game I put my hands on, but also, I'm really goddamn busy, and I don't want to if I don't have to. I'd rather just enjoy the game as much as I can, and for me, this does not mean tolerating frustration born of unrefined difficulty if I do not have to. And in this vein, Stellar Blade truly does do a fantastic job of opening itself up to players of all skill levels. <laughs> Overall, the combat in Stellar Blade has a healthy amount of variety to it, and for the most part, it is tightly delivered and very satisfying to play. Even if you don't use Action Assist, there are upgrades and abilities that make it easier to pull off perfect dodges and parries, and I was personally very grateful for this any time I was getting chain slapped by tentacles. Stellar Blade also has excellent upgrade and customization mechanics. Eve, of course, has a walk-in wardrobe's worth of outfits, hairstyles and accessories to choose from, but you already knew that. Eve also has access to a multitude of ability trees, with further ability sets unlocking through story progression, and some of these can make a huge difference to the combat. Your beta skills, for example, are available right from the start, and you can upgrade them to include things like recharging the energy needed to use them, increasing damage to health and shields, and eventually so that you can chain them twice. These can be an absolute godsend, especially in boss battles, Slash in particular can really save your ass if, sorry, when, you get surrounded. You can also change your exospine to upgradable alternatives that offer everything from enhancing your stealth capabilities to increasing your dodge and parry windows. Then there are the bounty of gear add-ons you can find that range from simply boosting your different damage and defense types to really useful bonuses like restoring a portion of your health whenever you kill an enemy. There's also a whole bunch of lovely extra touches, which I didn't need all that often, but it was still very nice that they were there. For example, you can buy different health items, and you can use them instead of your refillable recovery stock, and it was really nice to have something to fall back on when a boss fight depleted my regular stock. Also, the drone gun ended up being more useful than it first seemed like it would be, most notably when locking onto weak points at a distance, or safely exploding my way through this bullshit. Exploration is rewarded with a near constant stream of upgrade materials. You can use them to power up your blade, upgrade your drone, increase your gear slots, and your drone has a handy dandy scan feature that highlights anything of note nearby, an excellent tool for letting you know what is and isn't worth exploring. Even on story mode, Stellar Blade isn't exactly a pushover, and later areas in the game do unfortunately sometimes fall back on the lazy design tropes of inflating enemy damage and health, plus just generally making some of them really f***ing annoying. So all of these ability and equipment boosts are a huge help in not only varying up the combat, but also in just keeping the game fun. As you dodge, parry and stab your way through the story, you will alternate between linear yet visually arresting story beat areas and some larger more open map areas. Plus you eventually gain access to a social hub, where you'll be able to chat with NPCs and pick up side quests. As you may have already guessed, a lot of these side quests are standard fetch slash kill niceties, but the flip side is this makes them easy to get through, and there are tons of fast travel checkpoints to really cut down on backtracking, and to be fair, some of them do have some interesting stories attached to them. It's a corpse. A corpse? My goodness. Whenever you complete a quest objective, you're also given the option to teleport straight back to the quest giver. As much as I do appreciate when developers try to innovate when designing side quests, I also appreciate when they don't, but at least streamline them. And honestly, after a certain remake recently gave me minigame fatigue, it has been kinda nice to go back to something simple. 
The areas themselves are a bit of a mixed bag design-wise. I really enjoyed all of the decayed urban settings, showing the aftermath of battle on modern buildings coupled with their reclamation by nature, but the more open areas were a bit on the bland side. Wherever you are, there's always plenty of fun stuff to find and explore and do and kill. You'll find the occasional movable objects slash platforming puzzle to figure out, plus tons of locked chests, where you have to either find the code or solve a puzzle to get it open, none of which are particularly taxing, but they are a fun break from the combat. All of that being said, none of this is exactly fun to look at in a big old sandy desert. The music is always absolutely on point though. Not surprisingly for an anime post-alien apocalypse style story, it's usually a blend of hopeful notes of discovery, in the face of everywhere you look being reminded of the fragility of our species, and how humbling that forces both terrestrial and extra in nature can be. No one has ever made it back alive. However, with you, I have hope. Overall, Stellar Blade is a solid action-adventure game, with plenty of character customization and variety in abilities to help make your adventure feel like your own. Starting out, you can't help but make comparisons to better games, but you'll soon see that Eve's adventure is very much its own beast, or at the very least, its own wardrobe. If you're new to the Souls-like genre, Stellar Blade will pump up your confidence in no time and could maybe even help open you up to a whole new world of extra challenging and equally rewarding games. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. See you on the next one.